Hello learners, I welcome you to this session on mining single dimensional boolean association rules from transactional databases. Single dimensional single level boolean association rules are the easiest types of association. It presents a priority as a fundamental algorithm to find the common item sets. It has a procedure from frequent item sets to generate powerful association rules. Let us see how this happens. Several changes to the a priori algorithm for enhanced effectiveness and scalability are provided as techniques for mining association rules that unlike a priori do not involve frequent item sets generated as candidate. Priority can be implemented to enhance the effectiveness of iceberg queries responding which are prevalent in market basket analysis. Since we now know about the boolean association rule, we will see an example of that. Let us see a transactional data for an electronics branch. Here you can see two columns where the first column represents the transaction IDs and the second column represents the list of items that are bought in each ID. Let us look into T100 that shows that there are three items 11, 12 and 15 like that it goes on. What we have to concentrate here is that the items which are repeated in all the transactions. In this table you can see that several transactions are being repeated that is have same frequent item sets. Item sets like 11 and 13 occur together, 11 and 12 occur together. So we need to find out how these item sets are frequent and how much they are frequent. Let us see the a priori algorithm which is used to find the frequent item sets using candidate generation. Basically a priori algorithm is an algorithm for learning transaction databases on frequent item set mining and association rule. It follows by defining the frequent individual objects in the database and expanding them to bigger and bigger sets of items. So you can see that this will apply as long as those set of items appear in the database often enough that is they are more frequent. Hence an a priori algorithm frequent item sets can be used to determine the association rules and these association rules highlight the databases overall trends. So in this diagram you can see that from the databases the item sets are taken and then from the item sets the frequent item sets are taken and from there we can take the association rules. Now let us see about association rule mining. Consider a set i which has a set of n binary attributes called items and let d be the set of transactions that are stored in the database. Each transaction in d has a unique transaction id and contains a set of items in i. We can define a rule as follows. A rule is defined as implication of the form x tends to y where x is considered as y contained in i and x intersection y is a null set. The set of items x and y are called antecedent and consequent of the rule respectively. That is the part that appears on the left side is called the antecedent and the part that appears on the right side of the arrow are called the consequence. Now we need to know about certain useful terms. There are certain restrictions on different measures of importance and interest that can be used to pick interesting rules from the set of all possible rules. And the best known limitations are minimum support and confidence threshold. Now let us see what is support. The support of x of an item can be defined as the proportion of transactions in the data set which contains the item set. We can see the steps in the a priori algorithm now. So the first step is we have to scan the transaction database to get the support yes of each one item set and compare this yes with minimum support and get a support of one item sets. Next we have to use join to generate a set of candidate k item sets. We can use a priori property to prune the infrequent k item sets from this set. After joining and pruning, we can scan the transaction database to get the support yes of each candidate k item set in the given set and compare yes with the minimum support and get a set of frequent k item sets. And the next step is if the candidate set is null for each frequent item set 1, then we have to generate all non-empty subsets of 1. 
for every non empty subset of 1 output rule is s gives 1 minus s that is if confidence c of the rule is s tends to 1 minus s is the minimum confidence. And finally, if the candidate set is not null, we have to go to step 2 and repeat all the steps again. Hence, it is an iterative process where we start from single item set and proceed to multi item sets. When we proceed to multi item sets, we have to find out the support and confidence and then proceed further. Now, you would have got an idea of what is support of x that is the number of transactions which contain the item set x divided by the total number of transactions. Next we will see about what is confidence measure. The confidence of a rule is defined as confidence of x tends to y is support of x union y divided by support of x. This will give us an idea of how many transactions have the frequent item sets. Now let us look into the definition of the a priori algorithm. The a priori algorithm is an important algorithm for mining frequent item sets. It uses a bottom up approach with frequent subsets being expanded one item at a moment and a stage known as candidate generation. In this stage the candidate groups are being tested against the entire data in the database. A priori is intended to function on a database that includes for instance transactions collections of products purchased by the clients or website frequency information. Now let us see an example of the a priori algorithm. You all know that market basket analysis is a typical example of a priori. It provides insight into which product tend to be purchased together and which are most amenable to promotion. This will help us to frame actionable rules, trivial rules. And hence, people who buy chalk peas also buy duster can be recommendation given to the companies. And these rules will be inexplicable. Another example could be people who buy mobile also buy bag. Likewise, we can have several predictions from the a priori algorithm. Let us see an example. In this diagram, you see a series of steps. We will consider that the database D has the set of transactions and the minimum support as 0.5. When you look into the first table, you can see the transactions and the number of items brought in each transaction. From this first table, that is the database D, we will generate one item sets, that is transactions having a single item set and how many times they occur. Next, we will find the support of that. After finding the support, we have to find out who are all the candidates which have a minimum support. And from the candidates having the minimum support that is in the orange table as given there, we will then generate the two item sets. And again for the two item sets, we need to find out the support and then I have to find out the minimum support. Like that, this iteratively goes on until we find all possible subsets. And finally, we will have the table of items that is the transaction with the most frequent item sets and with the minimum support. Now, let us look into the a priori pseudocode. There are basically two steps in the a priori algorithm. First one is the join step, second one is the prune step. And the join step is generated by joining with itself. In the prune step, any k minus 1 item set that is not frequent cannot be a subset of a frequent k item set. From the algorithm, you can see that there are candidate item sets represented as CK and LK represents the frequent item sets. From the candidate item sets, we will use a loop to go through the transactions and generate only the frequent item sets. Now, let us see what happens in the join step. To discover LK that is the most frequent item set, a set of K item sets of candidates is created by entering LK minus 1 with themselves. CK is marked as this set of candidate and let L1 and L2 be LK minus 1 item sets. A priori assumes that items stored in lexicographic order within a transaction or item set, the join then gives the LK minus 1 join with LK minus 1. So, the output of the join step is the combination of LK minus 1 item set and the successive steps that is 
members L1 and L2 of LK-1 are joined if L1 of 1 is equal to L2 of 1 and L1 of 2 equal to L2 of 2 like that it goes on until we reach L2 of K-1. The condition L1 of K-1 less than L2 of K-1 simply ensures that no duplicates are added into the candidate subsets. Now let us see what happens in the prune step. CCK is a superset of LK which is its members may or may not be common but it includes all the frequent K item sets in CK. A database scan to determine each candidate's count in CK would lead in LK being determined. When CK can be enormous, so heavy computing could be involved. So, we need to decrease the size of CK. If any K-1 subset of a K item set candidate is not in LK-1, then either the candidate cannot be frequent and can be removed from CK. By keeping a hash tree of all frequent item sets, this subset testing can be quick. I think you would have got an idea of the two steps in the a priori algorithm. Now we will look into the limitations. A priori algorithm can be very slow and item set generation is the bottleneck. For instance, if the transaction database has 104 frequent 1 item sets and 107 candidate 2 item sets, then item sets that will be generated will take, a, take more time that is even after closing down. The database must be searched at every level to calculate those with support more than minimum support. It takes scans of nearly n plus 1 where n is the shortest pattern. Now we will see the methods to improve the a priori's efficiency. The first method is hash based item set counting. A K item set that has a corresponding bucket count below the threshold cannot be used frequently. Another method could be transaction reduction. In transaction reduction, subsequent scans a transaction that contains no frequent K, K item set is ineffective. In partitioning, any item set that may be common in the database must be common in at least one of the database's partitions. The next method we will see is sampling. In sampling, mining on a subset of information reduced support threshold plus comprehensiveness will determine the process. Another method which you can use to improve the efficiency of a priori is dynamic item set counting. We can add new candidate items only if they are estimated to be common in all their subsets. Having seen those methods, now we will see the advantages and disadvantages. A priori algorithm uses very large item set property and it can be easily parallelized and it can be easy to implement also. But there are some disadvantages also that you need to remember. It will assume that the transaction database is memory resident and it will require many database scans. So, we should be prepared to do more computation. Now, we will see how to generate association rules from the frequent item sets. Once the frequent item sets from the transactions have been discovered in the database D, it is simple to produce powerful association rules from them. Confidence is given as A tends to B is given by the probability of B divided by A that is the support count of A union B by the support count of A. All non-empty subsets of I are generated for each frequent item set I. For every non-empty set S of I, output the rules S gives 1 minus S if support count of I is greater than the minimum confidence where the minimum confidence is the minimum confidence threshold by the support count of S. Now, let us see how to improve the efficiency by some other methods also. Many variations of the a priority algorithm that concentrate on enhancing the initial algorithm's effectiveness have been suggested and many of these differences are listed below. As we have seen the list already, it is the hash based technique, transaction reduction, partitioning, sampling and the dynamic item set counting. In the hash based technique, the size of candidate K item sets that is CK for K greater than 1 can be reduced using a hash based method. For example, when scanning each transaction in the database to produce frequent 1 item sets L1 
from the item sets in C1 candidate, we can generate all two item sets for each transaction and then hash them into distinct buckets of a hash table framework. There is no frequency of a two item set whose respective bucket counts below the support limit and should be removed from the applicant set. Such a hash based method can significantly decrease the amount of k item sets for the candidate and naturally this will reduce the computation that is needed. Now we will see the transaction reduction. A transaction with no regular k item set cannot compromise frequent k plus 1 item sets and subsequent scans of the j item set database where j greater than k will not need it and hence those can be removed. In the partitioning method we apply a different criteria. A partitioning method can be used to mine regular item sets requiring only two database scans. It is made up of two stages. In the first stage the algorithm divides these operations into non overlapping partitions in stage 1. In stage 2, a second D scan is performed in which each candidate's real assistance is evaluated to determine the most frequent worldwide item sets. In the dynamic item set counting, the database is partitioned into blocks marked by the starting point. A dynamic item set counting method was suggested. Unlike in a priori, which determines fresh candidate item sets only instantly before each full database scan. New candidate item sets can be added at any starting stage in this variation. Mining frequent item sets without candidate generation will be very helpful. Let us see how to do that. It generates a test method of the a priori candidate considerably decreases the size of the candidate sets and then leads to excellent efficiency benefit and it can bear two non-trivial expenses. It may need to generate a huge number of candidate sets. And it may need to repeatedly scan the database and check a large set of candidates by pattern matching. This is especially the case for mining long patterns. Now as we have seen the a priori algorithm and the association rule methods, I will summarize of what we have seen in this session. The association rule mining probably the most significant contribution from the database community in KDD. A large number of papers have been published in this area. Many interesting issues have been explored via association rule mining and an interesting research direction is association analysis in other types of data such as spatial data, multimedia data, time series data and many more. Hence, the a priori algorithm gives you an idea of the most frequent item set in the databases and the association rule helps us to find out the association between the different item sets. This you can apply in many real time applications. Thank you.